Hi everyone, welcome to a new series on my YouTube channel which I call as series A to Z. In this series, we will discuss the most repeated previous year topics in INICET, NEET PG and FMGE. In A to Z fashion, which means that every day a new topic with a new initial alphabetically will be discussed by MCQ or image based discussions. So let's begin with our first episode that is episode A and today we will learn all the important points related to Ecclesia Cardia. So now let's begin with practicing few MCQs and the first MCQ is a 70 year old male patient presents with progressive dysphagia to solid and liquids and the manometry findings include uncoordinated or absent peristalsis with increased LES resting pressure. What is the most likely diagnosis for this patient? So the options are first stomach cancer, second cancer esophagus, third GERD and fourth ecclesia cardia. So what option do you think is the right one? Yes, the right option is ecclesia cardia. Ecclesia is a motility disorder of the esophagus where there is impaired relaxation of the lower esophagus sphincter that is LES which leads to difficulty in moving food from the esophagus into the stomach. This disorder often presents with some symptoms like regurgitation of undigested food, difficulty in swallowing solid and liquid foods and chest pain. Now let's discuss some key points of Ecclesia cardia. Ecclesia cardia is characterized by absence of LAS relaxation. It is equally distributed between male and female. Pathophysiology Only orbex plexus is present in esophagus. There are two types of ecclesia, primary and secondary. Secondary is known as pseudoecclesia because it is secondary to malignancy or Chagas disease. The clinical features include the most common symptom is dysphagia which is more to liquids and solids and weight loss. Here we find a triad that is dysphagia, regurgitation and weight loss. The complications include increased risk of aspiration due to regurgitation which leads to increased risk of pneumonitis which leads to increased risk of lung abscess and most common complication is lung abscess. Second, increased risk of squamous cell carcinoma. The AAA syndrome, L. Groves disease, Ecclesia, Alacrema and ACTH resistant adrenal insufficiency. The investigation of choice is manumetry. For management, we give drugs that include calcium channel blockers and nitrates, Botox injections, botulinum toxin or Bogi dilatation or balloon dilatation. Treatment of choice is laparoscopic Heller's cardiomyotomy. After Heller's cardiomyotomy, partial fundoplication needs to be performed. There are two types of fundoplication, DOR and tupet. The next question we have is a 32 year old male was diagnosed with ecclesia cardia. High resolution manometry revealed massive simultaneous high pressure contractions of the distal esophagus According to the Chicago's classification, the patient has which type of ecclesia? Type 2, type 1, type 4 or type 3? Yes, the right answer is type 3. Now let's understand the Chicago classification of esophageal motility. Ecclesia is divided into three types, type 1, type 2 and type 3. In type 1, we have elevated median IRP with 100% of failed peristalsis. In type 2, we have elevated median IRP with 100% failed peristalsis, panoesophageal pressurization with more than or equal to 20% of swallows. In type 3, we have elevated median IRP with no normal peristalsis and premature spastic contractions with DCI more than 450 mm of Hg with more than or equal to 20% of swallows. So here we have the next question, which investigation is not necessary for ecclesia cardia? A. Timed barium study B. Endoscopy C. Esophageal manometry and D. 24-hour pH monitoring 
Yes, the right answer is 24 hour pH monitoring. 24 hour pH monitoring is not typically required for the diagnosis of ecclesia. This monitoring is used to assess the presence and frequency of acid reflux into the esophagus over a 24 hour period. In ecclesia, acid reflux is not the primary concern. The focus is on evaluating the structural and motility abnormalities of the esophagus rather than measuring the acid reflux. So here is the last question for today. A 40 year old man comes with a history of retrosternal chest pain and dysphagia. Barium meal was done which is given below. What is the classical pattern of dysphagia found in this patient? First option is more for liquids than solids. Second, progressive dysphagia is equal for liquids and solid. Third, progressive dysphagia is more for solids than liquids. And fourth, intermittent dysphagia for both solids and liquids. Yes, the right answer is more for liquids than solids. This pattern is consistent with ecclesia. In ecclesia, dysphagia is more associated with liquids. So now let's discuss about some radiological findings of ecclesia cardia. First we have esophageal dilatation which means enlarged es esophagus due to functional obstruction at the lower esophageal sphincter LES. Next we have bird's beak appearance that is distal smooth short segment tapering resembling a bird's beak seen on barium swallow study. Next we have Lack of peristalsis, absence of normal peristaltic contractions in esophageal body. Next, we have residual contrast material, which means incomplete emptying of contrast material from the esophagus into the stomach. Next, we have pseudo-diverticular formation, which is outpouching or diverticula may form in the dilated esophagus. Next we have narrowing of LES that is narrowing or reduced opening of the lower esophageal sphincter and last but not the least we have rhythmic contractions simultaneous rhythmic contractions of the esophageal body resulting in a corkscrew appearance. So guys thanks for watching and that's all for today's episode. See you in our next episode that will be episode B.